Welcome back to Why in the Morning. And if it's Tuesday, it's most definitely Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at healthy parenting. Healthy courageous uh, parenting. In studio, I'm joined with David Wawero, who is the publisher. Uh, we were supposed to have uh, Miss, uh, Mrs. Uh, Joyce Murigi, but due to unavoidable circumstances, she couldn't, ma she couldn't make it. And uh, David Wawero is here to represent her. Karibu sana. Asante. So Thank David, uh, we, we will get to know Joyce uh, Murugi, but tell us who David uh, Wawero is. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I am a publisher okay and uh, i have uh, published most of my life i've been in the book world for about 30 years now mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, i'm an avid reader uh, but i'm also a parent uh, okay. of uh, now adult children and uh, i i enjoy doing that a lot but uh, most of all is uh, just enjoying mm -hmm. spending my time with people who have a story to tell oh, wow. because in life um, we often get amazed at the things we watch around us and the people we watch um, and are amazed at their stories and uh, many times in life we don't pause or stop long enough to look inwardly and recognize what a big story that we carry in our own lives and, and it's almost natural in life where people look down on what's in their hands mm -hmm. or look down on their lives you know they're saying grass is always greener on the other side on the other side yes. it's more or less like that with stories mm. the story is always better on the other side okay all right and what's your story what when did it all began for, for you being a publisher um i think it's it started with my two aunties okay um they were much younger than my mom mm -hmm. and uh and, and my mom got married very early. So when we, my two aunties, for example, their last born, mm -hmm. the age difference was between me and them was like six years mm -hmm. and the other one eight years. So they were in high school when we were growing up. And uh, they went to uh, good high schools. They were avid readers. They would come back with thick novels over the holidays. And we thought it was really cool. You know, the beautiful girls, you know, uh, in good schools and reading books. So we started reading books, uh, my brother and I. And uh, I mean, in primary school, you can imagine, I read Sidney Sheldon. Mm -hmm. In secondary school, I read Robert Ludlam, serious books. And my, my attraction to books started then. Mm -hmm. And um, so later in life, uh, I, when I, after university, although I did the sciences, but my first job, was in a publishing house at the Nairobi University Press, you know, just right across. Yeah. And that's how my publishing career began. And it's when I was there that I knew that I think what I would like to do um, is to create a platform for people to tell their stories um, and, and nurture them along that process of, of, of writing. And, and so you can see what started as, uh, as a hobby as an inspiration by my young and reading aunties, mm -hmm. uh, it, it became a lifetime career. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you can see that relationship of impacting when you have somebody you look up to and they have good habits they model to you. Those habits could lead to a career. That's exactly what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you made, out, you made a career out of something that you loved. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if the strange thing is, when I was in high school, my English and literature teachers pleaded with me, David, please do this in your A-levels. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, gosh, a tough guy like me. I was an amateur boxing champion. Oh, right. And I'm thinking, how does a tough boy like me d do literature yeah. in A-levels and then mm -hmm. university? It sounded rather soft. Oh, okay. So I went to do sciences, pure sciences. Mm -hmm. And as life would have it, my life came back full circle after studying all those sciences mm -hmm. i went back to the world of literature okay yeah oh, so. interesting yeah. very interesting yeah 
And uh, for someone who's watching us having this conversation and they're wondering, what does a publisher do? Like, what, what, what's it, like a, a day to day uh, look like in this form of a business space for you? Yeah, excellent question, Michelle. <laughs> um, uh, the, a publisher is basically, if you look at it, um, you look at the whole spectrum. Uh, publishing begins with ideas, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. You have an idea as Michelle. Mm -hmm. I have a story to tell mm -hmm. um, and I have a story to share with the world. I have an idea I want to communicate. And how do you do it? Because you are limited as an individual. You can only be with so many people um, in, in time. Um, you want to communicate to the rest of the world. So publishing is the process of helping you develop your idea and take it through what you call the editorial developmental stages. So the idea is suddenly turned in the process of turning it into a book. You go through the editorial process, you go through design, uh, you go through, you know, sales, marketing and distribution through channels. And eventually what was an idea ends up in the hands of an individual somewhere around the world mm -hmm. in the form of a book. Now, for many years, since 1400 uh, uh, AD, uh, we, we've known books only in the form of physical form. Mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays, I mean, you have even this is in digital format uh, yeah, or, you know, already okay. now. But but that process begins with the author's idea. Mm -hmm. The author is the initiator of the idea, is the formulator of the words and then the publisher helps them communicate to their audiences effectively, mm -hmm. packages their idea into a book. Mm, right. Yeah. And as a publisher from where you're seated, uh, how do you decide the best uh, retail space to approach f uh, to stock uh, your clients' uh, books? Well, it, <laughs> Michelle, it happened that, uh, you know, life is changing so much mm -hmm. because as I grew up, you could only access books like in two locations, maybe three. Now, the first location when we were growing up is the library. Mm -hmm. See, we grew up with libraries. Nowadays, libraries are not as popular. And I would encourage people to make libraries their friends. Mm -hmm. Now, the second place that was the, is, was the bookshop. But again, the bookshops were few mm -hmm. and fast spread. And most of them concentrated in, uh, in, in, uh, in towns, in cities and towns. And so the third place that we could access books as we grew up was where? Was basically uh, in schools, mm -hmm. uh, if there is a school library. Mm -hmm. And if the school concentrates on encouraging people to read non-textbooks, you know, other, other general books. But the real place that books should always find a place is the home. And so the way we decide on, on how to uh, and where to place our books is, is a very crucial decision. Mm -hmm. One is you want the widest spread possible. So you need more to make sure that they are in bookshops. You want to make sure that they're in libraries. We want to make sure that they are online, on online channels, on our own shopping cart, uh, say like booktalkafrica.com and uh, amazon.com and, and, uh, and, and all those other online channels. Mm -hmm. But in Kenya, again, Kenya is a very entrepreneurial market as you know. And already there are quite a number of online shops, for example, Noria.com mm -hmm. and places like those. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's to ensure our, our goal ultimately is that good books, excellent books, mm -hmm. good stories are in every home, in every village, in every Town, okay. in every city mm -hmm. in Kenya, in Africa, mm -hmm. and the world. Oh, easy access. Yeah? <laughs> easy access. Easy access. All right. Yeah. So talk to me about Book Talk Africa. Yeah. What's, what, what is it all about? So uh, Book Talk Africa, um, Michelle, you know, um, the tragedy of Africa is that they say, if you want to hide anything, mm. they claim. Yeah. Hide it where? In the book, in the book. And that's, a, that's, for me, is a very depressing statement. Mm -hmm. So the reason for Book Talk Africa is to ensure that we create stories that people want to read. Mm -hmm. Because you must incentivize people to want to read something. So mm -hmm. you must create good stories. So Book Talk Africa is about creating stories 
that will have one people will want to read will have an impact on their lives at any age and at any stage in their lives so you will find good books story books colored books uh, you know for children at an early stage you will find uh, you know good books uh, for younger uh, grow uh, younger adults you will find good books for uh, adults and you will find in adults there will be categories women category uh, there is a category for leadership uh, we have fiction uh, we have reference books and uh, so really i think um our vision is to see that transformation people engaging with stories uh, local stories every day mm -hmm. and providing them with high quality excellent content all right yeah. and speaking about children and young adults uh we are holding a book known as going the distance <laughs> a mom's steadfast support of her teens dreams by joyce Murige. so how did this come by how did you meet joyce <laughs> the author <laughs> well um so sometime uh, mm -hmm. not too long ago mm -hmm. last year I got um, a message on uh, you know social, one of the social media platforms mm -hmm. and said, uh, David, um, this is Joyce. And uh, Joyce is um, you know, someone that I had met uh, long ago in, at the university. Okay. And said, um, look, I am not in Kenya. Uh, I'm in the US. Uh, but I have a story that's burning in my bones. And uh, I knew that the only people that I, I would talk to uh, as an outlet for my story is Book Talk Africa. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so could we schedule a call okay. uh, you know, when it's good time, you know, good time for you to speak in Kenya? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we scheduled uh, the call mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we listened to her story. Uh, her story is um, a mom uh, who had to make fairly difficult decisions mm -hmm. um and um and and it sounded like a story you know because that's our reason for being as a as book talk africa to tell good stories yeah. and and so that's how our journey began mm -hmm. and and we listened and we knew yes this is something that we would want to publish all right it's yeah. a very interesting book known as going the distance yeah. uh, so the does that mean, or from the title "Going the Distance," does it uh, explain or rather tell the story of what she went through, just bringing up her kids and probably uh, balancing her career as well? See, the way I look at this story mm -hmm. is in the context of what's happening in not just our country, okay. but around the world, mm -hmm. and not just in Africa, around the world. I think there's a serious crisis in parenting. Mm. And um, the way we see this is because we find kids growing up without models of what they should do, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of uh, values and in terms of uh, uh, the kind of adults they would want to, to grow to be. And uh, we find that because of how society is evolving so fast, people are very busy in their careers. People are very busy in their social engagements. Mm -hmm. And then people think that to the extent that you provide for the kids and you have someone to take care of them and you take them to good schools and um, you know people think that they have accomplished the role of parenting what joyce does in her story is to change that narrative and to show that as a highly engaged professional joyce runs uh, you know, a property consulting business, mm -hmm. uh, which she has done for 25 years. Uh, she is running a home. She has a family, her husband and other children. And then her child, her last born child had a dream. This is what I want to do in my life as a career. And it required her to adjust her busy schedule, mm -hmm. how she ran her office, and how she ran her home. Mm -hmm. And she took that courageous decision to go to the US where her son went at a very early stage and support her because when kids are out there alone um, you know many things can happen and uh, she decided the most important thing in my life mm -hmm. is not my career is not my social life it is my child okay. so she was driven by love 
to go that distance. Mm -hmm. And it is metaphorical in a sense. Mm -hmm. She moved a physical distance, mm -hmm. which is like 8,000 miles uh, you know, from Kenya, 14,000 kilometers or something like that. But she also moved a distance in terms of, look, leaving a business behind mm -hmm. um, and making that sacrifice. Uh, you know, to, 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 to say the only thing that matters now is my child and I'm going to do it. Right. Yeah, so right. yes, the title is so appropriate to both the physical journey mm -hmm. and including even spiritual journey. Oh, it's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. It, yeah. It, you know, funny enough is that uh, from what I'm hearing yeah. and, uh, is the fact that any parent can relate to this, uh, to Joyce's story yeah. uh, from one point or the other. So you also parent David. Yes. So c tell us a couple of ways uh, or, or some of the ways parents can align their priori priorities to cater for their child's personal growth. Well, excellent. I mean, yeah, you've asked uh, that question as a parent. Um, look, I am a parent of a 25-year-old. Okay. I mean, 27-year-old and a 22-year-old. All right. And um, I would say that it's the best thing that has ha ever happened to me. I consider parenting such a great responsibility. Look, I and my wife, we made a decision mm -hmm. to bring about children. So it must become our responsibility mm -hmm. to ensure that they become mature, mm -hmm. confident, mm -hmm. highly engaged, and, uh, you know, adults. Okay. That's our responsibility. And uh, I think some of the things that we need to make decisions on, for example, is something that we always neg mostly neglect, the amount of time you spend on your kids. So I made a choice that regardless of how busy I am as a career person, as a business person, my first priority is my kids. Mm -hmm. So I ensured in all my business, my children had me. So my kids would say their, pa their, their father was present, mm -hmm. never would miss any of their events. And it, from the smallest, whether it is their sports day, their uh, awards uh, winning, uh, awards uh, days, their closing day, their parents' days, uh, if they want to go to, to be dropped for an event to their friends, to, they, they, they could always count on their father regardless how busy that I was. And I think to answer your question, the most important thing as parents that we could do mm -hmm. is to honor our kids by giving them time. It's not money they need. It is not cars, it is not houses they need. More than all those things, they need a parent who cares, mm -hmm. who models good behavior, who models good values, mm -hmm. and who encourages them mm -hmm. to be well-balanced adults when they grow up. All right, fantastic. Yeah. And for us sit, to, be, to sit here and talk about uh, the book Going the Distance, yeah. about healthy uh, parenting, that means there is a crisis when yes. it comes to, to this particular space. Yeah. Uh, as we said earlier on, uh, different parents make different sacrifices for the sake of the kids. Let's talk about uh, the toxic aspect of it. We have manipulation, yeah. whereby a parent will manipulate their kid to feel that uh, we actually did a favor, you know, bringing you into this world. And growing up in that space, there's the issue of black tax as well. <laughs> it's another luggage. So how can, a, uh, you know, a child or even a young adult uh, uh, just deal with this kind of a scenario. You know, Michelle, you've 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 talked about a, a major issue. Yes. Now that you find many parents um, either never wanted to be parents in the mm. first place, were never prepared to be parents in the first place, they never had a model of good parenting in the first place. Mm -hmm. They never had mentoring uh, in, the, in the first place. And, and so they end up in situations like the ones you're talking about, um, where they, they feel um, it's um, uh, either the kid is a baggage or uh, an infringement on their time, mm -hmm. and um, um, they're doing them a, a, a favor or, or things like that. And uh, I, I think what I would say in situations where kids mm -hmm. grow up and uh, come to the sad realization that they can't look up to their, you know, to their parents, and sometimes they don't have relatives around to look up to, mm -hmm. 
I think there is always there there may always be somebody around you in society and unfortunately society has broken down a lot when I was growing up I was a child of society so even if my parents for whatever reason were absent there were uncles there were aunties you could look up to even if they were absent there was a neighbor because remember the neighbor was like a parent uh, you know, to me, that's how I grew up. And even if there is no neighbor who knows you, any adult around you was more or less like a pirate. Uh, uh, now, that's so our society has broken down. Mm -hmm. However, there is possibly always somebody that around, either a, an older cousin mm -hmm. um, or somebody, another friend that they can look up to. Mm -hmm. What I would encourage young people is not to live with a victim mentality. I was born by irresponsible parents. I'm in an irresponsible situation. I give up uh, my life. I think we all have, uh, you know, the destiny of our lives in our own hands, mm -hmm. even at an early, early stage. So I would ask young people to look up to possible mentors, mm -hmm. whether they may be friends, whether they may be teachers, um, they may be religious, you know, people in, in church or, you know, some other religious uh, environment. Um, yeah, there will always hopefully be somebody who will help hold the hand of the young person mm -hmm. and walk with them and give them hope mm -hmm. and give them courage and help them recognize that even if they have that deficiency of parenting, mm -hmm. there is a lot of gold within them mm -hmm. that they can dig. Absolutely. Yeah. A couple of ways to deal with that uh, kind of a setback. So let's go back to the book. Yes. Uh, going the distance. So there's a book launch happening. Yes. yes. Uh, tell us more about uh, when it's going to happen and more about more in details about uh, the launch. Well, um, the launch of uh, this book will actually be tomorrow. Okay. Which is Wednesday the 4th mm -hmm. uh, of August yes. uh, 2000. And, and 21 yeah and uh it's an evening event mm -hmm. and um uh you know what what we normally would do with uh, our book launches um is 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 to make to create a sentimental moment mm -hmm. um and uh, help people reconnect with their own stories and so we will have uh, music for example uh we will have artists we have excellent local artists mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we will have a good program. Uh, we will have a keynote address uh, from, uh, you know, someone um, who's gone through that journey of parenting and uh, has, you know, in the legal circles very well, uh, you know, respected and um, uh, has, uh, you know, being head of uh, divisions of a high court uh, that, um, you know, look after uh, young, you know, children and, and all that. Mm -hmm. And, and so we, we are looking forward to, and, and look, uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. I think for us, the other thing about the launch mm -hmm. is that this is a first-time author. Mm -hmm. It's our joy mm -hmm. to publish a first-time author like oh, Joyce yeah. and introduce her mm -hmm. to the world, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through something like a book launch. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So where will it be happening and what's the time? Um, it will be at, at Serena. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, yeah. uh, David, for creating time to thank be with you. us and talking you. about matters pertaining yeah. a healthy parenting. So, how can people reach out uh, to uh, Book Africa, if uh, uh, Book Talk Africa, if they want to be part of you guys? Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, anybody wanting to tell their stories, yes. they can first reach us on our website, mm -hmm. which is uh, booktalkafrica.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is an author's uh, submissions, you know, page yeah. link there. Mm -hmm. They can get us. All our contacts are there. Mm -hmm. Our books are available mm -hmm. in uh, all leading bookstores. Mm -hmm. uh, so if anybody goes to a bookstore like Prestige, they will find it. Mm -hmm. uh, TBC, they will find these books. Mm -hmm. And uh, also uh, the online platforms for sales. Mm -hmm. You can buy the books on uh, on our platform, booktalkafrica.com, mm -hmm. uh, but also on nuria.com and other online stores. Oh. All right. Thank yes. you very much, David Waweru, for creating time to be with us. Thank you. We were looking at Going the Distance mm -hmm. by Joyce Murige. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> all really right. So that's all we had for you right here on Entrepreneurship Tuesday on Y in the Morning at Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. So have a nice uh, day. Take care of yourself and make sure you keep safe. And uh, we'll see each other next Tuesday.